Is your safe full of one syllable and two or three character brands such as SIG, Glock, or H&K? If so, this video is likely not for you because this entire gun cost as much as five HK magazines. In this video, we're taking a look at the relatively new and very affordable Taurus PT-111 G2C. What's up everyone, welcome Squat Squad and welcome to Slav Guns. I'm glad to have you here. There is no quicker way to get an established gun owner to point her nose at you than to say you bought a Taurus. Yes, even a high point. Because with a high point, they would just laugh at you. Taurus certainly has an interesting story and produces a variety of interesting pistols and revolvers, predominantly in Brazil. On one hand, Taurus is a leader and a company I would easily recommend for someone looking to purchase their first 1911 or Beretta 92 clone. The Taurus PT-1911 is a very nice 1911 that packs a lot of extra features at a very attractive price point. The Taurus PT-92 is a very nice Beretta 92 clone and is made on Beretta's former factory in Sao Paulo, Brazil. On the other hand, Taurus-designed firearms have at times been plagued with quality control issues despite having some innovative features, the prime example being the Taurus PT-24-7 pistol. As such, when you live in a more affluent, though generally more gun-restrictive areas, such as New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, you typically seldom see Taurus firearms on the gun shelves overfilled with Glocks, SIGs, and Smiths. In the rest of the United States, however, it's Taurus and Ruger that fill the shelves, and this is not at all a surprise, as the latest ATF data identified Ruger as the largest domestic firearms manufacturer, and Taurus was the second largest importer of firearms just behind Glock, importing just about twice as many firearms as all of German handgun manufacturers. And this is the best-selling Taurus handgun, the Taurus G2C a relatively new concealed carry gun that you can pick up for just under $200. The Taurus G2C is a rebrand and an update of the original Taurus PT-111 or a PT-111 G2. The G2C is listed as a compact pistol and is available in both 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson calibers and a variety of colors and finishes. I originally requested a 9mm version from Taurus, however a 40 Smith & Wesson version was sent to me by accident, and fortunately it was a happy accident. In either case, a 9mm matte black version was sent to me as well, and that's what I have here. I will do a separate video focusing on the 40 Smith & Wesson shooting experience and then link it up above. Despite being listed as a compact, it's a bit on the smaller side and can easily be considered a subcompact, but not quite a pocket carry firearm. This is definitely most comfortable in a holster. So let's start with the frame. The frame is made of polymer and has a lot of nice features. First, the frame has nice texturing. And what's interesting is that unlike some other guns we looked at recently, less of the frame is textured here and it's only textured on the lower part of the grip, below the trigger guard. The texturing would be considered fairly aggressive by new gun owners, 
but I find it just right. Like most compact and subcompact pistols, the frame is one size and there are no interchangeable grip panels here. There is a bit of an undercut on the trigger guard, which would allow you to get a higher grip on the gun. You do not have stippling or texturing anywhere else on the frame. What you do have, however, are four very nice scallops that are made to be placeholders for your thumbs. The one on the right side of the gun, right above the trigger guard, is a nice placeholder and a reminder to keep your booger finger off of the trigger and out of the trigger guard unless you're shooting. The one on the opposite side of the frame is perfect if you shoot with a thumbs forward grip. The frame also has a fairly nice sized beaver tail, which you should find quite comfortable. On the front of the frame, you have a single rail section to mount a light or a laser. I think this is too small for a bayonet. <laughs> the G2C has a fairly nice magazine release, though it does feel slightly small while handling the gun. The magazines do drop free and come out with some authority. However, you have to push it in a bit deeper in order to drop the magazine. Even though it's not listed in the manual, left-handed shooters can swap the magazine release to the opposite sides. There are some videos out there that will show you how to do it. Unfortunately, that's where the ambi features end. The gun comes with a thumb safety that functions in the same manner as a 1911. Clicked up, the gun is safe. Clicked down, the gun is hot. You can also ride the safety here if you're used to shooting a 1911. The safety is only for your right thumb and it's not ambidextrous. Just forward of the safety, you have the slide release. It is decently sized and does not stick out too much. For some reason, it reminds me of some classic SIGs such as the P226 and the 229. Right above the trigger guard, you have the takedown springs and they function just like you have on your Glocks and some other pistols. Moving up, the Taurus G2C has a steel slide with a stainless barrel. As I mentioned, the G2C is available in a number of colors, including a black frame with a stainless slide. The gun does have slide serrations, but they're only on the rear of the slide. A more popular recent trend has been to have both front and rear serrations. On top of the slide, you have another safety feature. While you should always treat a gun with a closed slide as it's loaded, there is a loaded chamber indicator here. Of course, it needs to be said. The loaded chamber indicator will just show that there's something in the chamber. It could be a loaded round, or it could be a piece of brass that failed to extract, or even a snap cap if you train for them. So yeah, treat the gun as if it's loaded. Much like with the frame and the slide finishes, you also have a choice of sights. You can either have these adjustable three dot sights where the rear is adjustable for both windage and elevation, or you can have a drift adjustable night sight. Lastly, we have the trigger. Despite it being priced near $200, the Taurus G2C actually has a fairly nice trigger, although it's quite a bit different from anything else you may have shot. Taurus has what they now call restrike capability. They previously called it second strike on prior firearms. So a quick trigger 101. On hammer fired guns, think CZ75, SIG P226, HK USPs, HK P30s, and even the Beretta 92 series, you have an external hammer and you can shoot the gun in two ways. Starting from the hammer down in double action or hammer cocked in single action. In double action, the trigger pull is generally going to be long and hard. The single action, or much like you find in 1911, however, is much smoother and very clean. When it comes to carry, this would mean that most people are walking around cocked and locked, meaning a loaded round in the chamber, hammers cocked back with only the manual safety holding it safe. When you have a malfunction and suspect a light primer strike, you can simply pull the trigger again, this time from a double action pull. Not possible with a 1911. With striker fired firearms, you have a much more consistent pull with no external hammer to deal with. The downside, however, is that recoil and or racking the slide is required to make the trigger work. As such, when you pull the trigger and the gun does not go bang, you have to rack the slide. The Taurus G2C trigger is almost like a hybrid. It's a striker fired gun 
However, it also features restrike capability, allowing you to simply pull the trigger again without racking the slide. So let's dive deeper into the trigger and its stages. The trigger does have a safety dongle, which you press in while your finger is on the trigger. It must be noted that unlike the Ruger LCP-2 and the Ruger 57 firearms, which we just looked at, the dongle doesn't get recessed in all the way. Even all the way back, you feel the dongle on your fingertip. Depressed, your finger will come to a clean wall. There is, however, a slight pause here before you get to the wall. And that's where it seems like the trigger resets from its restrike capability. The trigger break is really nice and the trigger does stop all the way back against the trigger guard. The reset is very short with a nice audible and tactile click. At that point you're back at the wall and you can pull the trigger again and this is where you should be training yourself. Now if the trigger goes off however the slide does not cycle, doesn't cycle, now, if the trigger goes off, however, the slide does not cycle, you would release the trigger out all the way and you'll feel it reset. At that point, you'd feel what is essentially a double action trigger. The trigger weight. Once loaded, the trigger weight on the first stage is around two pounds, two and a half, and the stick, second stage is where the trigger breaks is around five and a half pounds. The restrike trigger weight is just a few ounces heavier. The beauty of the gun is in its capacity. The G2C chambered in 9mm comes with either 12 round magazines for the free states or 10 round magazines for those less fun states. The 40, the 40 caliber version of this gun has a 10 round capacity. The guns come with two magazines and have a fairly nice pinky extension. On compact guns it does make a huge difference, at least in my opinion. Both, not, both the 9mm and the 40 Smith & Wesson versions weigh 22 ounces. So let's go ahead and put some rounds on this 9mm. plates at 21 yards, about 8 inch plates. <laughs> Compact tourist for under 200 bucks. Sights are pretty good, trigger's not bad once again, I do feel the dongle a little bit. Um, it is about 30 degrees outside, so I'm starting to feel it in my hands, but uh, it's pretty good. Tough to forget that this is a 
compact gun. And I'm going in my head, I'm like, crap, I missed I missed that steel plate. Wait, that plate is at 22 yards. And this is a compact gun. That's a Taurus. So not bad at all, I really can't complain. This is our magazine number two. The bottom line, this is a fairly solid gun and the only reason it's not considered a $400 gun is the Taurus name. At under $250, however, the name doesn't matter much and is it therefore any surprise that this is one of the top selling firearms in the United States over the last few years? So why is it only $250? We surely have to keep in mind that living levels and wages are lower in Brazil than they are in the United States. As such, a $250 firearm from Brazil really is a $400 firearm manufactured in the United States or a $600 firearm in Western Europe. Furthermore, like Ruger in the United States, Taurus is a massive company in Brazil and produces a lot of firearms. As such, their fixed expenses are spread over more units and thus the cost to produce each firearm is less versus a company struggling to produce 20,000 guns per year. Overall, I'm really pleasantly surprised with this gun. It has been fairly reliable and the fit and finish and ergonomics are light years better than other $250 firearms such as High Point. Now, I say fairly reliable. The 40 Smith & Wesson version, I'll say this out right now, has been a phenomenal gun with absolutely zero issues. One thing I'll say is generally as soon as I get the gun, particularly for testing, I will shoot it as it is. I'm not going to clean it or take it apart or anything else. The way it comes to me is exactly the way of shooting it. The 40 Smith & Wesson version of this gun has been 100% reliable with any types of ammo we've put through. The 9mm, however, I did have some failure to feeds with some bullseye type ammo. So I'm not sure if it's ammo related or the fact that I didn't clean the gun or whatnot. However, I did clean the gun and it has been reliable since. Uh, it could also be general break-in, although typically I think if the gun comes to you in the box from a factory, you shouldn't have to worry about the break-in. Um, but in full disclosure, I did have some failure to feed issues uh, with the gun and I believe it might actually even possibly been with one magazine with one type of ammo I will do more testing on that and see if I can figure it out However, since cleaning everything the mags and the gun um, The gun has been reliable and it has been trouble free. So keep that in mind Now moving on um, the frame is very nicely textured in the right places and the sights are adjustable 
and are quite nice and the trigger is really good for what you would expect at this price point or I would say even twice the price in that $400, $450 level. There are however two things about the trigger which I'm not crazy about. So first, the trigger uses a safety dongle that helps make the gun drop safe. I don't have an issue with the trigger using the dongle, but my issue is that the dongle sticks out and it doesn't fully recess when you hold it in. Uh, with the 9mm, it hasn't been that much of an issue. With the 40, it had a little bit more, um, especially when we're shooting gold dots, plus P's. Um, you do feel it, you do feel the recoil coming through just the dongle rather than the entire trigger guard. Um, with other guns, like I said, the Rugers that have the dongle, I don't have any issues with it. Uh, the Zev OZ9 sticks out. It's actually on one of them, it's completely recessed, and the other one, it sticks out just a little bit. Um, the Glocks I was testing, it does stick out a little bit, but not as much. Um, and even some of the other guns where you do have the dongle that doesn't recess all the way, it's a little bit of a wider dongle, so it doesn't feel as sharp on your fingertip. So once again, that's me. Um, it might not be an issue for you, it is for me. But once again though, for the money, I'm not, I wouldn't be complaining. Now, the second thing I wasn't particularly a fan of, and once again, it may not be an issue for everyone, or may even be a benefit for others, is the overall short length of pull or the distance between the trigger and the back of the frame. Now, I don't have big hands. However, I felt the trigger was a wee bit close to the grip and found the trigger to be close once it's, fine, once it's pulled in all the way. So if you have smaller hands or you're a woman with smaller hands, this may actually be a benefit to you and you may find it more comfortable with, than other firearms. If you have large paws, however, you may need to compromise your shooting grip to make it work. And by that, what I mean is, so typically I'll shoot with the tip of my finger, so your finger is gonna stick out quite a bit more. What I found is like even shooting it significantly more or shooting it quicker, because the trigger's pulled in all the way to the back, I end up compromising the position and instead of pulling it with the fingertip, I'm putting a like with the joint. And that's suboptimal because you might end up pulling the trigger one way or the other. Um, if you have bigger paws, I mean, you might be shooting that way anyway. Um, but if you have smaller hands, it's gonna be pretty good and I should probably have my wife shoot it. Um, or even somebody who's younger because this would be a fairly pleasant gun. So I would certainly recommend that you shoot the gun or hold one before buying it. Now the other thing, what about the restrike capability? For sure, the restrike capability allows you to very easily practice dry firing. It's not something you can do with a striker fired gun as you would need to cycle the slide by hand every time you pull the trigger. On the other hand, do you need it or are you likely to use it? Now, there are a number of possible malfunctions with the firearm. The only one that the restrike can potentially solve is a failure to fire. This would be when you pull the trigger, but the gun doesn't go bang, typically resulting from a weak primer strike or a hard primer. This is quite a common issue with rimfire firearms and ammunition, but to be quite honest, I don't believe I ever had an issue like this with 9mm or other centerfire cartridges in the 15 years or so I've been a gun owner and the hundreds of thousands of rounds I've shot. Now, to be more specific, yes, I did have dud rounds where you have a primer strike. However, the round doesn't go bang. But I don't recall a time where I would take it and fire it again and it would go off. Has it happened to you? Let me know. In any case, I guess I'd rather have it than not. Now, the last thing that needs to be mentioned is that while the gun is great for right-handers, the gun is not ambidextrous. The slide release, the safety lever and the magazine release are on the left-hand side of the gun, meant for right-handed shooters. And while you can swap the magazine release to the other side, you cannot do it with the slide release or a safety lever. 
Now, for left-handed shooters, I'm assuming that a lot of you guys are already going to be used to racking the slide manually rather than using a slide release. However, if you want to have it and uh, use it cocked and locked, um, I suppose you can actually use it much like I do with the 1911 style safety with the right index finger. Um, it's going to be a lot tougher on here because it's closer in and it's a much smaller lever. So left-handed you just pr figure it out for yourself, but probably not going to be the best gun for you. Now, the bottom line, for around $250 or so, this gun is a no-brainer. It's functional, it's comfortable, and it comes with Taurus's limited lifetime warranty. It's also going to give you above average capacity, 12 rounds versus 10 or less, that you're going to find in other firearms of this size. For those that are still on the fence or have worries about the Taurus name, I'm going to state a perfectly well-suited comment which I found in another video. A Taurus on a nightstand is better than the SIG on layaway. So that's the Taurus G2C in 9mm. In a separate video, I'll give you my shooting impressions of this 40 Smith and Wesson version. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and share the video with your friends. If you have not done so already, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date on the Taurus G2C other handguns, our precision rifle series, and our upcoming coverage of SHOT Show 2020, where we'll be bringing you daily content from both Media Day at the Range and the show. As always, thank you for watching, keep on squatting, and I'll see you soon. Cool.